Mike McCool here with the Royal Examiner and today I am at the Warren Heritage Society. The Warren Heritage Society is located over on Chester Street here in downtown Front Royal and it's really a place where there's just tons of stuff about history. With me here is Dale Corey. Dale is the past president of the Sons of the American Revolution, but there's another, is there more names to that? I mean, James Wood, the second chapter. I, I knew it was a long name, but it's, they do a lot of stuff. You'll see their stories posted on the Royal Examiner. They're, they're kind of like living history of our country, and it's a great thing. You should really pay attention to what, what's going on in our country, and it's just a great thing that you don't learn in school. Today, Dale's going to tell us about a program that they're putting on here over at the Warren Heritage Society and things we need to know about. So before I tell you about it, we're just going to let Dale tell you about it. So Dale, tell us what's happening here. Thank you, Mike. Hey, good morning, all. Uh, we're going to be talking about the Battle of Cowpens. And why is the Battle of Cowpens important? Because it was the turning point for the American Revolutionary War that allowed the Americans to win it. And of course, if they hadn't won that, we might well not be here. And this probably would not be a Warren County who was named after, of course, Dr. Joseph Warren, who was a martyr at the beginning of the uh, Revolutionary War. But we want to get down to it because there's so many things we could talk about. I could spend all day just talking about different aspects of the, of the war. The Revolutionary War was not going well for the Americans up in the, in the northern campaigns there. And by 1978, the British and the Americans actually had kind of come to a stalemate up there. General Clinton kind of ran New York, had New York all locked in. General Washington was out in the, you know, in the frontier areas, and they were trying to decide what to do. So the British come across this plan, we're going to start a southern campaign. And we will go down there, march from the south, come up through Virginia, we will get them in a big pincher, and we will end the war. Well, but they first went down there, they started dominating the campaign in the south. But they come up there, and Nathaniel Green replaced Horatio Gates as commander of the Southern Campaign, and one of the first things he did was to get Daniel Morgan to come back and be a leader in his unit. Then he did something that you don't do. He split his army, and when he split his army, he sent General Morgan to the west to get out there and cause problems for the little frontier outfits that the British had sitting out there. Well, Cornwallis sent Banaster Tarleton. He was one of the elite leaders for the uh, British at the time, and he sent him to chase Morgan. And when he ran Morgan down, they caught him up at the cow pens. But Morgan had set up his defense, especially just for this event. And so what happens up there was something we'll discuss next Wednesday when we're going to have this pre presentation on the Battle of the Cow Pens and tell you just exactly how it was that Daniel Morgan was able to dominate the British unit, totally destroy it, and basically set the stage so they could go to Yorktown and end up winning the war. And that's what we call the rest of the story. <laughs> so that's going to happen when? Next Wednesday? Wednesday at 7 p.m. here at the Warren Heritage Society. It's, it's free. It's free. And it's great. I've been to a lot of these things. In fact, we're going to bring our camera to this thing because these are things that we need to know about, and you're not going to find it out anywhere. You don't read about these things anymore in school. It's, yeah. it's like they keep moving the point of history where we keep studying, and, and if we don't study, we're going to end up repeating it. <laughs> and that's, and that's, that's true. So we'd like everybody to come on down, take a listen. Uh, I'll have Dick Hoover here with me, and he's going to be uh, have some blades with him to show you what some of the uh, swords they used at the time. We'll discuss a little bit about the weaponry that was used during the battles, and we'll talk about it. Great. And they have a lot of displays here. Uh, Dale has just finished the display right behind me, and you can check that out when you come here. There's all sorts of some artifacts, some little things that soldiers would carry with them. We have the Betsy Roth flag, there's some prints, and there's just a lot of other neat things that's happening uh, really in our backyard. Yes, indeed. And even though, as most of us know, you know, Warren County didn't come around until 1735, but that's okay. We had a lot of people from this uh, area. We knew that, right? <laughs> yes. There was a lot, a lot of people in this area that were involved in the Revolutionary War, and they say, well, what did we have happen in the Revolutionary War? Well, one of the things we had, when they had British prisoners, they marched them right through, come right down through Chester Gap and come right up the road to go up to Winchester. Right. So there's a ton of Rev War history here, including a lot of the patriots that are buried in the county. Right, right. Well, Dale, we will see you next Wednesday, all right? Yeah, we'll and we there. want to see you there, too.